Hi, I'm Amy Romeo from Amy Romeo Crafts. And if you're new to making sublimation earrings, you might be wondering, should you be putting something on the back of the earring? And if so, how? If you've had that question before, then this video is for you. I'll be showing you my technique of pressing sublimation designs onto the front and the back of the sublimation blank earrings at the same time. Before we get started, let's just talk about a few supplies. I'll be using a Cricut Easy Press set to 400 degrees to press my earrings. You could also use an Easy Press Mini set to high, or you could use a traditional heat press. You'll also need some heat resistant tape. I'm using the Cricut brand, but you can use any brand you'd like. You'll need a heat pressing pad to protect your surface. I'm using this thick one from Artispree. I'll have links to all of these materials for you in my video. You can also use a heat pressing pad from Cricut, but if you're using this lighter color surface, you don't want the ink to transfer. So I recommend covering this with a Teflon sheet or butcher paper or parchment paper, or even a thick sheet of cardstock. You'll also want some heat resistant gloves because the earring blanks will be hot. The blanks that I'm using are MDF and they have a sublimation coating on both sides. They come in lots of different shapes. There's even these sort of thinner ones that are a glitter canvas. I have a whole video on how to make the glitter canvas ones and I'll link to that for you. But you can use any of these MDF blanks or the glitter ones for this technique. If you're using the MDF ones, it's important to peel off a very thin coating. It's a plastic coating that protects the earring blank and you'll need to peel that off of both sides before you start to press. I also have some little detailed scissors and I have some sharp tools to help me peel off the protective coating and also help me remove the sublimation paper after we've pressed. So for the sublimation prints that I'm using, I'm using a print that I designed myself and I actually have a whole video on how I made these floral earrings using this pattern and I'll link to that for you. But you can use your own sublimation print or you can use Cricut infusible ink. So I'll be using a print on the front and some Cricut infusible ink on the back today. So I've already trimmed my little pieces of that large infusible ink sheet. I've already trimmed them to a size just slightly larger than the blank I'm going to press. And I trimmed it with about a quarter of an inch of a gap on all sides. Now I'm going to repeat that process with my little sublimation print. So once both of my front and back prints are trimmed very close to the blank. I'm going to hold the blank in position where I want it. And then I'm going to use some small scissors and I'm going to cut a notch right at the side of the largest piece of the blank. So on the heart, it's the wide part of the heart. And I just cut two little tiny tabs to create a little notch piece that I can fold over onto the side of the blank. That's going to help us hug the blank and make sure that our blank doesn't move. Now I'm just going to repeat that on the other side. Cut those little notches. There we go. Kind of use your fingers to press them into shape. And I've chosen this size notch because I've trimmed my little pieces of heat resistant tape to about that wide. And that's going to wrap perfectly on top of that notch. So again, I'm holding this in place because I do have a particular pattern placement in mind. Now I'm going to repeat that process with my little infusible ink sheet. And I'll go ahead and cut those similar notches on the exact same side. If necessary, you can trim the notch a little bit shorter because we do want it to fold over the side of the earring blank without folding onto the front of the earring blank. You can use your fingernails or you can use a sharp tool to sort of notch that edge a little bit. And then all I'm going to do is use my little piece of heat resistant tape and I'm going to tape the notch down. You want it to be very nice and tight and flat. There we go. And now repeat on the other side. So we've got a taped notch on this side, a taped notch on this side, and you can see how the paper is pressed very tightly on both sides up against the earring blank. Now we can just use regular pieces of tape and tape the top and the bottom.
And you might be wondering why we can't just tape the top and the bottom on all sides. And you could, but let me show you an example. If I were to just tape the blank inside of a little sandwich of infusible ink or sublimation prints, even if you tape the top and the bottom, your blank can still move around inside of this little sandwich. It's not really held into place, and then your print can become blurry. So this little notch technique really helps keep that blank secure inside of the infusible ink or sublimation print sandwich. I'm just gonna repeat this process with my other blank. So now that we have both of our blanks taped up, we're going to put them on our heating surface. I am going to protect my surface with a piece of butcher paper. And that's just for any of the ink blowout that's gonna come through when we press. And we're gonna heat press first on one side and then we're gonna flip them over and press on the other side. So the side that is up is going to be the one that's pressing. I'm just gonna cover with a Teflon sheet. My easy press is set to 400 degrees and we're going to press for 60 seconds. So our 60 second press is up. I'm gonna put on my gloves because these will be hot. I'm gonna remove my Teflon sheet. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and flip these over so that the side that was facing down before is now facing up. We'll cover again with the Teflon sheet and we'll repeat pressing for 60 seconds. So our second press is complete. I'll move away that cover sheet. Again, keep in mind these are very hot. That's why I'm wearing my gloves. If you're not wearing gloves or you don't have gloves, then just let them sit here and cool off for a few minutes before you try to handle them. Then I'm going to use my little small scissors and just start to cut apart my tape. And then we'll be able to see the print. So there's the floral print on the front and there's the solid infusible ink color on the back. So there you have it. We have the sublimation blanks with the print front and back, both printed at the same time. I hope you like this video. Again, if you're interested in this floral pattern, or if you're interested in a complete beginner sublimation earring tutorial, I'll leave a link to that video for you. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.